Our next guest sees the S&P uh, rallying to 6,300 by year end, but says we could be entering uh, what he's calling a zone of hesitation in the next couple of weeks. Joining us now, Tom Lee, Fundstrat uh, Capital, Chief Investment Officer and a CNBC uh, contributor. It's good to see you, Tom. I want to talk Great to you to about the uh, bonds tenure at some point, but you, you see four reasons why you still expect uh, the S&P to continue to rally in December and maybe to 6,300 by year end. What, what are the four reasons? Well, one is seasonality. Um, December historically is a strong month, but when you're up more than 10% in the first half and it's an election year, December has been up 100% of the time. Hmm. Hmm. The second is yields have moved down to, pre, to pre-election levels. You know, the 10 years at 4.1, that's good for multiple expansion. The third is, I think it's been surprising, but sentiments actually turned negative the last two weeks, even as the markets rallied. To me, that's a contrarian bullish signal. And then finally, we still have those two puts, the Trump put and the Fed put. And I think that means you, you still want to buy any of these dips. What can Trump do to make sure the market keeps going up? Well, I think we've seen it with uh, how he's made cabinet uh, proposals or nominations that he's very pro-business. And I think, as, as many have said, Trump is very focused on the stock market. So I think communication is still a strategy and it's a reminder that animal spirits could come back. Um, I don't know if you watch the way the financial, say this tactfully, I don't know if you watch the way the financial media industry covers tariffs. <laughs> I mean, um, how can you call him pro-business, according to these people, when he's pro-tariffs? Because it, you would just think, you know, if you've watched the coverage of tariffs. Yeah, I, I mean, I, to me, it's a reminder that it's good to carry a big stick. And I think tariffs have proven to be a good negotiating tool. I think we've seen some proactive actions by other countries. And in general, I, I don't think the new White House wants to pursue any policies that would hurt corporate profits. So I think ultimately, whatever is accomplished is going to be pro-business. That's interesting. All right. I hope everybody's listening. Um, at least uh, that's, that's one, that one man's opinion. Um, Whenever we talk about, um, like, the 10-year, it's always a, well, it would be good this way, but it would be bad this way. If, if it is falling, which is good for multiple expanding, why isn't that indicating that maybe the economy isn't as strong as we thought and that maybe corporate profits won't hold up there and uh, of the multiple expansion on one hand, but sometimes that's combined with, with a slowing in, in profit growth? Uh, it is a possibility, and it's always hard to tell what the bond market is telling us. But when I look at the next 6 to 12 months, and we know the Fed wants to reduce the cost of capital for homeowners in mortgages and for small business owners, having the 10-year stay at these levels or even fall is actually an easing of financial conditions. So to me, that's a good sign. Do you think that trying to this, this uh, Elon Musk the Vec Ramaswamy thing. Do you think it's A, that they can make real progress, and, and B, would that be a positive for economic growth, or would it be a negative for economic growth? Because it's, it, you know, you're laying people off, uh, you're spending less. Um, well, I think it's great that someone is scrutinizing these. Bernie huge... Sanders said it was great. Yes, that's right. And, you know, these are. That's huge... not good. No, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, these are huge budget items, and so I'd love to see someone really identify where there could be waste. Mm -hmm. And is that bad for the economy? I think, for in general, most people view government spending as the least efficient capital. So if you reduce government spending, and it's been crowding out private sector spending, I'd rather see the private sector reinvest that capital. And I think that would overall be you very good. You sound like it's a, a zero-sum game. Uh, I, I mean, a lot of people would take any spending they can get, that, you know, whether it's government or otherwise, for, for an economy, for juicing the economy. Yeah. I'm, I, you think it would go into private if it's not spent by the government? Yes, that's right. I think that would free up money because this is, you know, money, the capital that the government spends is competing with private sector money. I'd rather see the private sector invest this money at a higher rate of return. So I think overall it would be positive for GDP and profits and for equities. Do you want to uh, 
Uh, we always get a Bitcoin comment from you before we, we let you go normally. It, it got stuck uh, under 100. That's, that's a pretty it's a, a psychological level, I would imagine. Yeah, I think some of this could be there's a lot of folks who don't want Bitcoin over 100,000, and, and some of it may be the exchanges themselves are concerned because there is a pretty low supply of Bitcoin available over the counter. So you have a supply shortage, and if Bitcoin makes a move above 100,000, I think there'd be a big chase. So I'm still confident Bitcoin's going to close much higher before year end. Before year end. Before year end, yeah. So break $100,000 before the end of the year? Yeah, well above 100,000 before year end. Hmm. It's just a matter of time. It's December 2nd. It's not that long, Tom. So it's going to do it in the next. Four Tom, weeks. Tom makes bold short calls. I know, calls. He's nut, you're nuts, and they, they all come, usually they come true, um, you know, on a roll. All right, Tom Lee, thank you.